So in today's video, we are going to be talking about adrenergic receptors. So in sympathetic nervous system, several classes of adenoreceptors have been distinguished pharmacologically. But two main classes of receptors that are alpha receptors and beta receptors are classified on the basis of their response to the adrenergic agonist. So there are alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. So these are classified on the basis of their affinity or their response to the adrenergic agonists that are epinephrine, norepinephrine and isoprotein renal. So these are on the basis of epinephrine nor epinephrine isoproterenol these are three adrenergic agonists on which we have classified the adrenergic receptors because there have these agonists have different affinities for these two types of adrenergic receptors so, each of these main receptor types has a number of specific receptor subtypes that have been identified. So, alteration in the primary structure of the receptors influence their affinity for various agents. Like, this agent have different affinity for alpha and beta, whereas these two have different affinity for alpha and beta therefore these are classified in different classes so these alpha and beta receptors are then further classified into subtypes because of their different affinity for adrenergic agonists so if we talk about alpha adrenoceptors so adrenoreceptor of alpha type show a weak response to synthetic agonist that is isoproterenol but they are responsive to the naturally occurring catecholamines that is epinephrine or norepinephrine so we can say that alpha receptors have more affinity for epinephrine nor epinephrine and then isoproterenol so this is the order of potency and affinity of adrenergic agonist for alpha receptors. The alpha adenoreceptors are subdivided into two subgroups that is alpha 1 and alpha 2. Based upon their affinity for alpha agonist and blocking agents. So alpha receptors are being classified into two subgroups upon the affinity basis. So if we talk about the example, so phenylephrine is an agent which has more or higher affinity for alpha 1 receptor than that of alpha 2 receptors. Whereas clonidine which selectively bind to alpha 2 receptor and has less effect on alpha 1 receptor so it based upon the affinity of the agent that to which it bind so we can say phenylephrine have more affinity for alpha 1 whereas clonidine has more affinity for alpha 2 so this is the basis of 
this classification. So now if we talk about alpha 1 receptor in detail that how they work and how they cause cellular response in the body. So if we talk about alpha 1 receptors, these are actually G coupled protein receptor and protein which is present in this receptor is actually GQ. And we know this type of G protein actually activate phospholipase C. So if we draw the structure of uh, how and uh, these alpha-1 receptors are being activated and how they actually work. So if this is the lipid bilayer and over here if we draw the structure of receptor just roughly just to make you understand that how it actually work this is the receptor binding site agonist binding site and over here there is G coupled protein that can be either GQ, GI or GS so it has actually three subunits which are alpha, beta and gamma. So these are three subunits of this G coupled protein. Over here there is also presence of lipid bilayer. So what actually happened that when there is binding of agonist on this position that is the binding side of the receptor what actually happened that this receptor is being activated. So I am drawing a star over here to represent that it is being activated. So after activation what will happen there is also presence of attached gdp molecule with this alpha subunit but when there is binding of the agonist on the receptor side what actually happened that this gdp is replaced by gtp and now this is removed and this is being attached over here. The binding of agonist to the receptor increase the GTP binding to the alpha subunit causing dissociation of the alpha and GTP complex from beta and gamma complex. So this thing will be dissociated from this thing. So there is formation of two complexes that can interact with other cellular effectors usually a enzyme a protein or an ion channel that are responsible for further actions within the cell these responses are usually last for several seconds to minutes sometimes the activated effectors produce second messengers that further activate other effectors in the cell causing a signal cascade effect so how this actually happen that this is now being separated and this alpha subunit will move in this direction along with GTP being attached to it whereas beta and gamma will stay over here so now this thing is being separated and this thing will actually bind to an enzyme 
which is being called as these receptors are present postsynaptically on membranes of the effector, effector organs and mediate many of the classic effects originally designated as adrenergic, alpha adrenergic, involving constriction of smooth muscles. So, these are involved in constriction of smooth muscles. These both actions can further lead to many secondary effects which can cause changes in cell and this can lead to cellular responses to the activation of this receptor. Gamma and beta subunits are therefore anchoring of this G protein whereas Alpha subunit is actually playing the role of binding of this GTP molecule because this thing is actually being attached to this enzyme which further lead to release of or activation of these two secondary messenger molecules which then further lead to calcium release or protein kinase activation and these things can cause constriction or relaxation or any other uh, respective effects which are being caused by the action of these things. You need to remember that alpha-1 receptors actually have GQ coupled protein and GQ coupled protein has effector molecule as phospholipase C which cause the activation of inositol triphosphate that is 1,4,5 triphosphate and diacylglycerol which further leads to protein kinase activation and calcium regulation or calcium release from endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol so it can cause further actions inside cell. And now what will happen when this drug is being removed? When this drug is being removed from the receptor, what will happen that this receptor will be no longer in its activated state. So what will happen that this complex will go back to its original or normal state and this GTP molecule will be uh, converted back into GDP molecule by release of one inorganic phosphate and in this way there will be and there will be formation of this normal state of the receptor. Next if we talk about alpha 2 type of receptors adrenergic receptors the receptors are primarily located on sympathetic Presynaptic nerve terminal. So these are presynaptically present on nerve terminals. So and control the release of norepinephrine. So when there is sympathetic adrenergic nerve stimulation, a portion of the released norepinephrine circle back and react with alpha 2 receptors on the presynaptic membrane because as we know if this is the presynaptic and this is the postsynaptic neuron over here there is presence of alpha 2 receptors so when there is release of norepinephrine some of this norepinephrine bind to postsynaptic nerve terminal receptors whereas some of the neurotransmitter bind to presynaptic nerve terminal receptors which is which are alpha 2 receptors this inhibitory action serves as a local mechanism for modulating norepinephrine output when there is high sympathetic activity so these actually act as inhibitory autoceptors so uh, these 
alpha 2 receptors are also found presynaptically on parasympathetic neurons. But in contrast to alpha 1 receptor, the effect of binding at alpha 2 receptors are mediated by inhibition of adenyl cyclase and by the fall of level of intracellular cyclic AMP. So this is actually GI mediated receptor, coupled receptor. So there is presence of G coupled protein which is actually inhibitory in action and it is called as GI protein and thereby when this is being activated adenyl cyclase. So adenyl cyclase is actually being inhibited and thereby there is decrease in cyclic AMP. So if we look at this diagram again, if there is activation of drug and if we consider it is a alpha 2 receptor now, so this is the GI having same subunit that is alpha, beta and gamma and this is being activated and now there is, this is not phospholipase C, this thing is now adenyl cyclase. But what will happen in this case? There will be inhibition by the binding of this complex with this adenyl cyclase. There will be inhibition because it is actually inhibitory protein. It is not stimulating protein. GQ and GS are actually stimulating whereas GI is actually inhibitory protein. So when this uh, when a receptor having GI is being activated, what it means is that there is actually inhibition going on in the cell having this kind of receptor. So there will be decrease in the activity of this enzyme which is adenyl cyclase in this case. So there will be decrease in the activity of this uh, enzyme and there will be decrease in the concentration, cellular concentration of cyclic AMP because normally uh, this enzyme is causing the activation of cyclic AMP but now as it is being inhibited there will be resultant decrease in the concentration of cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP is actually responsible for protein kinases activation. So this thing will be now inhibited. There are presence of further subdivisions of these two receptors that is alpha 1 receptor and alpha 2 receptors. So alpha 1 receptor and alpha 2 receptors are being divided into alpha 1a, alpha 1b, alpha 1c, alpha 1d and into alpha 2a, alpha 2b and alpha 2c. This extended classification is necessary for understanding of selectivity of some drugs. For example, if we talk about a drug that is tamsolosin, this drug is selective antagonist for this receptor type that is alpha 1a. So this drug is being used for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. And this drug has fewer cardiovascular side effects because it only target alpha 1a subtype receptors which are primarily found in urinary tract and prostate gland and it does not affect alpha 1 B type, B type that is present in blood vessel. So it does not cause 
binding to these kind of receptor but it only bind to alpha 1a receptors so this is how it show its selectivity and therefore it is being further or uh, extendedly classified because of the selectivity of some drugs so this is used for prostate benign prostate hyperplasia So now if we talk about beta adenoceptors, these receptors actually have different rank order of potency than that of alpha receptors. Because agent that is isoproteinol has greater sensitivity for beta receptor than that of epinephrine and norepinephrine. So this is the order of order for beta adenoceptors which is different than that of alpha receptors so this is how they differ in rank order of potency than that of alpha receptors beta adenoceptors can be divided or can be subdivided into three major subgroups that is beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 so we can say that beta adenoceptors are divided into beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 based upon their affinity for adrenergic agonist and antagonist beta 1 receptors have approximately equal affinity for epinephrine and norepinephrine whereas beta 2 receptors have greater affinity for epinephrine than that of norepinephrine. Thus tissues with a predominance of beta 2 receptors are particularly responses, responsive to the effects of circulatory epinephrine released by adrenal medulla. This beta 3 receptor is actually involved in life lysis that is breakdown of fat and it also has effect on muscles of bladder binding of a neurotransmitter at any of these three types of beta receptors result in activation of adenyl cyclase And thus, what this activation does is that it causes the increase in CAMP level. So, we can say that beta adenoceptors are actually GS coupled protein receptors because GS and GQ are actually stimulating protein whereas GI is inhibitory protein so when there is binding of a agonist to beta receptor what actually happened that there is stimulation of adenyl cyclase that is the factor molecule in this case so what will happen it will cause increase in the concentration of secondary messenger molecules and thus it will cause stimulating effect whereas GI which we have talked in uh, alpha 2 receptor what they does is they cause inhibition of respective effector molecule. Now if we talk about that how these receptors are distributed in the body so adrenergically innervated organs and tissues usually have a predominant type of receptor that one of the type of the receptor is predominant in that organ for example tissues such as vasculature of uh, skeleton muscle have both alpha 1 and beta 2 receptor so 
we can say that skeleton muscles have both alpha 1 and beta 2 but one of them is predominant which is beta 2 beta 2 are predominant in vasculature of skeleton muscle other tissues may have one type of receptor almost exclusively for example heart contain predominantly beta 1 so beta 1 is predominant in heart so we can say one of the receptor is predominant in that respective organ so we cannot say that it is uh, only this type of uh, receptors are present over there there are multiple type of uh, receptors which are present in a particular organ but one of them is predominant in that organ so in the, the long exposure to the catecholamine reduce the responsiveness to these receptors and this phenomena is called as desensitization this phenomena can be occurred by three mechanisms which are being suggested by scientists so what are these three mechanisms so first of all sequestration of receptors so that they could be unavailable for interaction with the ligand so when there will be no availability of receptor there will be no interaction and in that way there will be no response to the binding of the receptor with the ligand so second mechanism is down regulation of receptor what actually happened in this mechanism is that there is disappearance of the receptors either by destruction or by decreased synthesis so in this way when there will be less availability of receptor there will be less binding of the ligand to the receptors and thus there will be less of the response because of the binding because there is less of the presence of receptors either because of destruction of uh, other receptors or by decreased synthesis of the receptors and the third mechanism is an inability to couple with g protein because as we know these receptors are g coupled protein and when there is activation of the receptor it actually stimulate the g protein which then cause the further activation of effector molecule and cause the release of secondary messenger molecules so when there will be an inability to couple with g protein thus there will be no further response because of the binding of the receptor with the ligand so what will happen this will happen because of the phospho phosphorylation of the receptor on the cytoplasmic site that uh, the inner side of the receptor will be there will be phosphorylation of the receptor and in this way what will happen there will be inability of the receptor to couple with G protein and these three mechanisms are involved in desensitization of the receptor because of the prolonged exposure to the catecholamines we talk about the characteristic responses mediated by adenoceptors so if we talk about the alpha 1 receptor when there is activation of alpha 1 receptor what actually happened that there is vasoconstriction going on the vessels so when there is binding of the ligand to the uh, receptors being present in the vessel what actually happened they cause the vasoconstriction effect 
where as we have talked that there is also presence of beta 2 receptor which actually cause the opposite effect that is vasodilation so beta 2 cause vasodilation whereas alpha 1 cause vasoconstriction so uh, other than vasoconstriction alpha 1 also cause increased peripheral resistance because as there is uh, vasoconstriction going on what, what will happen it will cause increase in peripheral resistance because peripheral resistance is the resistance which is caused by the vessels on the blood to flow so as there is a uh, vasoconstriction so what will happen there will be less of the space present in the vessel which will cause the resistance for the blood to flow in the vessel and this will cause the increase in the blood pressure so all of these three things are interlinked that these are causing each other. Now if we talk about alpha 2 receptor, so the stimulation of these receptors cause inhibition of norepinephrine release. Because we know these are present presynaptically on the nerve terminal. So these are actually for the negative feedback mechanism. So these actually cause the uh, further inhibition, uh, these actually cause the inhibition of further release of norepinephrine into the synaptic cleft. In this way, there will be less of the availability because of the activation of this uh, receptor in the synaptic cleft. So, not only this, it also causes inhibition of acetylcholine release because it is also present in. Uh, cholinergic neurons presynaptically. It also causes inhibition of insulin release. So it is actually for the feedback mechanism. So it actually causes the inhibition or feedback inhibition of these substances. So now next we are going to be talking about beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So activation of beta 1 receptors cause tachycardia because these receptors are actually predominantly present on heart. So when these are activated, these cause the tachycardic effect. Not only this, it is also involved in lipolysis and other than that, it causes increased myocardial contractility. So as we know, it is present on the heart, it will also cause some contractility increment. So not only this, it also causes the release of renin, which is being released in the uh, presence of low blood pressure. The activation of beta-2 receptors cause vasodilation, as we have talked previously that uh, it is present in the vessels. These receptors are present in the vessel which actually cause the opposite effect of that of alpha 1 receptors. So in this way when there will be vasodilation, what will happen? There will be decrease of the peripheral resistance and in this way there will be decrease of the blood pressure. So not only this, it also causes bronchodilation. So it also causes glycogenolysis other than that it causes the release of glucagon it also relax uterine smooth muscle so why we are studying these actions which are being caused by the activation of these receptor we are studying it because it has useful to organize physiological uh, responses to the adrenergic stimulation according to the receptor type because many drugs preferentially stimulate or block one type of receptor. So we can know which drug will cause what. So to know what drug will do, we need to firstly understand what type of receptor it is acting on. So in this way, we will know what will be the effects caused by drugs which we are prescribing to our patient so this was all about any receptors if you have any question let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching my videos